Joining me on the line today is the vocalist of the band Charming Liars. Welcome, Killian McGuire. How's it rocking today, man? It's going good, man. Thanks for having me. So, where are you guys at today? I see you have a little stopover between uh, shows. So, where are you guys uh, hanging out? Yeah, you know what? We, we actually uh, we've been in Chicago the past uh, couple of days and haven't, haven't had a, a complaint about it, man. It's been great. So what have you been doing in, in your uh, time? Obviously, the weather has been somewhat pretty good. Did you hit up Lala while you were here? Uh, you know what? We, um, so it's funny enough, me and, me and Mike, our, our bass player, we, we, we were the only two who stayed behind in Chicago. Everybody else uh, flew back home for a bit. Okay. So him and I, um, we just kind of, uh, the first day, we just didn't talk to each other completely. <laughs> uh, and, and that's not because we all love each other. It's just because we do love each other. Yeah, exactly. And we kind of needed a little, uh, you know, a little kind of a break from, from the noise. And it was kind of like a, a you know, just, just kind of a chill day. And then yesterday, uh, we went and we did kind of the touristy things, you know, the Navy <laughs> here and things like that. I mean, this, the, fun, the funny thing is, is, we've been to Chicago a million times, okay. but we always drive in, play a show, and then we got to leave the next day. So we never really have any time to, like, experience, you know, Chicago proper. Um but we've already had, uh, you know, two deep dish pizzas, and it's, it's yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty filled. Did you, uh, did you hit up Al's Beef fun. and all that, too, or did you, you just stick in local? Uh, you know, we went to, uh, oh, gosh, uh, I should probably remember the names of these places, but um, I, I can't at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we've we, we kind of sampled a couple different places, and uh, we've gone out for drinks, and, yeah, so we've, we've been having fun, but the rest Ooh. of the band gets in today. Gotcha. Um, so, okay. yeah, I think we're going to definitely do some more exploring with the whole gang, you know? Good, 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 good. So, I just have to say, I've been listening to uh, most of your uh, catalog of music so far, and your new song, Like a Drug, is incredible. And not only is it a great song, but the video that I've checked out a few times now, it's powerful. It has, you know, different messages with displays of... Images of drug use, sexual situations, domestic violence. So my question to you, when you when you wrote this song, did you have that imagery in mind for like the videos or how did that all come uh, about? You know, it, it kind of, um, yes and no, you know, I mean, it, it, it definitely, as we wrote it, it's something that we definitely were thinking about. Um, we had a lot of ideas kind of thrown around in our heads about, you know, with each song, you know, oh, yeah. you know, video for this, I see this or that, and and for this uh, particular um, set of videos, they kind of, um, they kind of just, yeah, they 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 definitely muse off of the music for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so they sure do. Because yeah, I've watched you know, Insomnia and obviously like a drug. I'm still waiting for time to start to come out of it. I couldn't find it anywhere yet, so I'm figuring it's coming out yeah, soon. That's not out yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, really soon, and that'll answer. Gotcha. So, like we were just saying, the first song of the trilogy is Like a Drug. Then you have Time to Start, which is, the video isn't out. Then you have Insomnia as part three. So how did the collaboration for the Spoon trilogy, as you guys call it, come about with your director, Philip Lopez? Well, you know, right after we finished recording those three songs, and actually the bulk of, of, of the new album that's going to be coming out, um, we had those three songs really kind of stood out to us, and um, we noticed that if we paired them all together, um, it created something, and, and, and sonically, that we really wanted to kind of bring to life visually. Um, so it was, you know, we kind of had, had thrown around some ideas, and we come up with, you know, the idea of wanting to do almost like a film, and, and mm -hmm. you know, we're not in any of these videos either. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, so, you know, we, we, we really just wanted to kind of do something a little different than, than um, what we already seen, you know, I mean, we, you know, we've of course done the videos where, you know, where it's a live video and, and, and things like that, and those are really cool, but I think we were just kind of at a point in our careers where we wanted to do just something different, and we felt like the music um, was, was kind of taking more of a serious turn, and to represent that visually, we kind of needed um, to approach it almost kind of like a film, you okay. know? Um, so we kind of came up 
came up with with, with, with a bit of a, a, the ideas for the story, and, and, and then we, you know, we obviously met up with our fantastic director, Philip Lopez, really just, you know, he brought that, that, um, that extra little piece, you know, that really oh, yeah. just brought the whole vision to life, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it came out, and, and like you said, yeah, the, the third video, like, uh, time to start when we came out, and then after that, um, we plan on releasing, you know, the videos in their entirety as a, as a, as like a, a, a short movie, with okay. a lot more dialogue. Yeah, I saw you guys are going to be uh, putting it to film festivals, so is that, is yeah. that what you're looking to do? Yeah, uh, we are, yeah, we're looking to, to do some submitting to, to some of the film festivals and, and um, kind of just, uh, you know, just get it out there, you know? So th those people that are listening, like I said, this is like a drug video. That was the first one I checked out. And it was like, I was just like, wow, that's heavy. So, you know, it was, it really hit, hit home, especially if, you know, there's a lot of people dealing with all those situations. So it's like, you know, it's stuff that needs to come to the forefront, and you guys nailed it. So, oh, thanks, great man. job yeah, with I mean, that. It, 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 it's kind of like, you know, it's one of those unfortunate things that, you know, mm -hmm. most people are, are affected, you know, directly or even indirectly by it by those subjects and it's just kind of um, it's unfortunate you know but it is it is something that, that has to kind of be talked about and, um, and yeah you're, you're totally right so while you're sitting here in Chicago you know for the last few days you guys have been touring basically all over you guys have hit the US South America Mexico UK Brazil blah 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 and when you first started to actually tour as a band what were your expectations on the road then compared to your expectations on the road now? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, when <laughs> I first started touring with the band, I had done I had done a little bit of touring prior. Um, so, you know, I was kind of, you know, I wasn't completely green, but there was definitely a lot of, um, you know, a lot of places on the, on the map that I wanted to check off. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as my expectations then, you know, I just, I was just, uh, I was just happy to get to the show live, you know? <laughs> Um, gotcha. But now, you know, it's, it's become something to where, um, you know, we, we feel our, our show has become kind of, um, you know, it's very fluid now, and, and, it, and, it, and it's different each night, but, but there's always that consistency, you know, musically and, and also just on the stage, our chemistry, is, it, it's changed, but it's always, um, it's always very strong. Um, but, you know, as far as, like, what I expect, on the road now is it's really to um, just let go on stage more. Mm -hmm. You know, in the earlier days I was I was definitely uh, still kind of getting used to myself on stage. I mean, I played a ton of shows prior. You know, I've been doing music since I was like 14. But uh, you know, when you're touring, it, it, you know, it's a little different. You know, um, so I guess yeah. Nowadays, it's more of just um, being able to kind of let loose a bit more and just kind of discover, you know, who I am on, on stage, you know, because it does change gotcha. from tour to tour and from cycle to cycle. Cool. And we were talking about videos earlier. I also was checking out your I'm Still Standing video, the cover of uh, Elton John's classic. It's a little, I'm not going to say a little, it's a lot lighter than I expected because his is a little more upbeat and going. Yours is kind of smooth and more sensual. How did that one come about? Like, is he was he an inspiration to you as a artist? And obviously, that song is pretty rocking. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, um, you know, Elton is just such a. I mean, I, I don't think that there's probably an artist alive today that that you know hasn't you know like been directly or indirectly affected by his music. Exactly. And, and you know, it's just kind of one of those things. You know, like it's just it's just Elton and the funny thing is, is it's, I think the hardest thing about making a song wasn't necessarily recording it um, and you know it was honestly just figuring out what song to do mm -hmm. you know when you have an artist like Elton John and, and there's just such a catalog that just takes you know back pretty far just just hits you know and, and really deep songs and, and um, you know we, we were definitely you know we were we were hearing a fist fight me and the guys in the band <laughs> trying to figure out what song to do. Um, so what did it come down to? Yeah, so finally when it boils down and, and I'm still standing, kind of got thrown around, it was like the one song where, you know, um, we stopped 
throwing fists at each other and we're like, oh yeah, I like that song. I like that song too. It's a great song, and we we all kind of agreed on that. Um, and then you know our you know our guitar player, who's also our producer, you know Carnig. Okay. Um, he, he he went and he laid down, you know this this atmosphere and, and this um, you know this just this these, these images, you know sonically that uh, that really evoked kind of like a uh, you know. A, Kind of not not as upbeat like you were mentioning. It's a little, it's a little, uh, a little more somber. Yeah, and more smoother, yeah. and it kind of it flows different. Because you see a lot of covers now, where a lot of bands try to you know actually imitate exactly what the song was. I kind of like exactly what you did, and like the old Johnny Cash version of um, Hurt, where you totally put your own spin on it. You know, in in a really cool way, and that's kind of how yeah. I see how you guys did it too. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a, just and that's a, such a great song, Hurt too, isn't it? I mean, yeah, what a what a fantastic cover that is. But yeah, so it you know, really was just uh, it was it was it was an amazing experience doing it too, and, and getting to to work with Elton on um, you know the uh, with the Grammy Foundation, and you know we took we took you know the the earnings from that, and we were able to do some really good stuff with it. So yeah, it was uh, I mean it was quite a surreal moment too. I mean. When you tell your mom that you're working, uh, you know, with Elton John. So did you actually get to work with him and meet him? We yeah, we we've, we've actually got to meet him, um, and uh, he's you know, he's such a cool guy. He's always kind of um, you know he's played our music on his radio station before. Oh wow! On Apple Music, and yeah, he's just he's, uh, it's it's great. He's he's such an you know just an incredible musician. But you know, I think one of the things that I appreciate most about Elton John. Besides, you know, um, you know, the, the musicianship is, is the fact that he takes the time to um, look into the new up and coming bands, and and he likes to, you know, kind of shed a spotlight on them, which you don't see a lot of, you don't see as much of, um, you don't see as much of that as you you, you think you would with with artists his size. See, and I was going to ask that, too. It, it, I notice that a lot. I notice that a lot of bigger bands are more to themselves and. I mean, obviously, there are some that love to help younger bands, but it's like a lot of them are just, you know, oh, well, we already made it. We don't need to help anybody else. I can't. I don't like that type of mentality. It's like you were once that band that want is asking for help. Why not at for least, sure. you know, give yeah. them some advice or take them under your wing or let them play some shows for you. It's, it's stuff like that. And I mean, I'm sure that you know, like, you know, like like I said, you know, there's there's other artists like Elton that, that do it. And I'm sure there's probably times that we don't hear about it, you know. Exactly. But, um, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there is, but that's the one thing I think that separates, you know, Elton from from, uh, from kind of everybody else is that he's very open about it. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, I like, I like this band, you know. Not even just with us, but with a lot of other, you know, a lot of other artists. When you listen to his radio station, it's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, of the classic songs, you know, paired with bands that most people hadn't heard of yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so he kind of champions them. So you know, he's just you know he's 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 all aces in my book. Yeah, awesome. And being on tour, when you're on tour, obviously you absolutely love it. You love playing in front of crowds and whatnot. When you get home, do you ever get that itch where you're you know home for a few weeks and you're like, well, we have a tour not really set yet, but I need to get out. Do you ever have that moment where you have to feel like you just got to be out and playing? Definitely. I mean, when you when you like. The only thing I think of is, is absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you, it's, uh, you know, when we're when we're even even when we're two weeks away from ending the tour, there's kind of that bit of you, you know, where you you're you're excited to go home and you're excited to do laundry, which is great, <laughs> um, and and eat like consistently well, and you know, have put down roots for a bit. But but there is that part of you, you know, that once you kind of get a taste for you know living day to day. Um, you miss that, you know, and I think that, that that's actually what I was talking the other day to my, you know, to Mike about, our bass player, was, was that it feels fantastic when you're on the road because you have no time to think about um, little petty problems that most yep. of the time would, would, would nag you back home, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, like paying this bill on time or doing, you know, just even just a small thing, um, they kind of build up and, and you know, you, you kind of when you're on the road, you kind of get into like a, a mechanic routine of like, you know, you get up, 
you drive to the next town, you, you set up everything, you do sound check, you play the show, you tear it down. There's not very much time to really, uh, you know, think in yeah. between that, you know. Uh, so I miss, I think I miss that the most when I'm on the road, but or when we're off the road. But thankfully, we would actually have, um, we've got dates booked all the way up until the end of October. I and saw. It looks like, yeah, and it looks like, you know, maybe we'll get something else, um, after that too so you know nice. we're just we're just we're just happy to to be you know on the road just doing what we do you know cool and when you guys are doing your shows or before or after how much time do you take to actually connect with fans i mean are you guys usually at your merch table wandering around in the crowd what do you guys oh, yeah. do with that yeah we, we we um we're very very adamant about about making sure that you know we, we shake every hand and get to hang out with with everybody who um wants to come and say hello and, and I, yeah actually it's, we don't really have a merch guy in this one so right after we play I, I got it down to the merch booth and I, and I sell everything you're right so, there gotcha uh, but also on top of that you know we, we, had, we, we really make a point to make sure that we can connect with everybody after the show you know because there's been so many times in you know my life when I've seen a band and I've really liked them and maybe I've been to hang out with them uh, but then that's it you know, the night's over, I go home, and they go back, and they play another show in another town, and we kind of forget, we lose co- contact, you know? Yep. Um, the, that's the beauty of uh, social media, is, is we're able to uh, keep people plugged in with what we're doing, where we're going, and, you know, I, I think that's what makes it so great, you know, is, is being able to um, keep that connection, you know? And that, it's important to us, and them too. And that connection is there, and I see that a lot with a lot of bands now, where after the shows, I'll hang out with them for, like, a few hours, take pictures with them, you know, sign whatever. Just, you know, be be friendly. And, man, the the fans eat it up. And they're, like, ear-to-ear smiles and just so appreciative. And it's fantastic to watch it. So I absolutely love when bands actually get out and do that. So it's a good thing that yeah, you guys do it, too. Yeah, I think, that, I, think, um, I think, you know, we're seeing more of it, which is fantastic. Exactly. Um, you guys are on tour right now. Obviously, you have a little layover. You're on tour with Dorothy, the band Dorothy. How has this tour gone so far for you guys? It's been really great, actually. Um, we've, we've, uh, it, you know, I think the thing that's been the most fun about this tour is, um, you know, Dorothy and, and her band and her crew. I mean, they're just such cool people, um, you know, on and off the stage. We, you know, we've, we've you know, we take time and, you know, we can joke around with them and, and hang out. And then um, I think the other thing that I, I really I really like about it is is their music and our music, um, there are definitely similarities, but there's also differences as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes, that's what keeps the show interesting, um, is that nobody's stepping on each other's toes, you know, musically. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, you know, when we're done, when we're done playing, uh, you know, everybody in the crowd gets a completely different experience like Dorothy hits the stage and, and, you know, vice versa. And I think that's really important to keep it fresh, you know, because, I mean, I've seen tours sometimes with, uh, you know, and, you know, you see it and it's great, but, like, the opening band um, maybe shares too many similarities with the headlining band, you know what I mean? And, or, yeah. or, or vice versa. And this has been really cool and it's been really, you know, it's been really awesome to kind of, um, you know, our fans have have gotten, you know, I mean, quite a few of them have already known about Dorothy, but the ones that haven't, you know, are blown away every night. I mean, if you haven't, haven't seen them yet, I mean, they, they totally... I haven't, and actually, I'm really sad I missed them about two weeks ago when you guys were here in Chicago playing over at the Forge. I was like, oh, I, yeah. I had something else going on that night, too, and I was like, oh, man, that was, wouldn't have been one show to hit. So, next time, next time. Yeah, which I'm going to say next, September 27th at the Chop Shop, you're going to be... Playing with Glorious Sons and Welshly Arms, those guys, man, they have some music out that is pretty wicked. So, are you got, obviously you're really looking forward to that one once the Dorothy tour is over too? Yeah, I mean that, that I think that that Welshly Arms and, and Glorious Sons tour has has made um, the winding down of the Dorothy dates uh, less painful. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like you said, you, you know, have something to look forward to after that. So that helps exactly, out. Exactly. Yeah, it's not. It's not. The summer's not over yet. You yeah. Know? Um, that's it's funny. That's how I always feel as, as tours wind down. It's kind of like when you're a kid you know, getting ready to go back to school. You know, it's like, oh yeah. no. You know, uh, but yeah, those are going to be great shows, and we we've had time to kind of you know digest 
the music of Well She Arms and Glorious Johnson. And we've already been, they've already, you know, we're already quite, you know, kind of familiar with them to begin with. But that's the fun thing when you go on the road is with a band and you, you kind of get to dive into their catalog more and, and uh, you know, kind of get the inside look. Um, but yes, yeah, I think it's going to be a really great tour. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, Well She Arms had a pretty big year so far, I think, as well. Yeah, they're, on, they're on the road with uh, 30 Seconds to Mars right now. Yep. So they're doing some, uh, they're doing some things. So yeah, I think it's going to be great to kind of, um, you know, have you know all three bands kind of just converge, you know, in the fall, and you know we're going to hit, we're going to try and hit most mostly everywhere here in the state. Right yeah, that's what I and I see here. Like I said, September twenty seventh is when you're back in Chicago for the Chop Shop show, which I'm hopefully going to be at. I just got to obviously talk to Ed to make sure I'm in, so you know I can finally meet you guys in person and kind of actually talk to you so yeah, that'd be man. cool that'd be great that'd be great so a couple of more things I'm also hearing that you guys have a full length album that apparently will be released later this year do you have a name for the album or any info or tidbits on when it'll be released or what should we expect on it yeah you know if you would have asked this maybe three weeks ago I would have denied it's existence <laughs> uh, but we are at the point now where we're uh, you know we, we do have a name um, and it's the record's going to be called Thought, Flesh, and Bone. Oh, and is that, a, is that the first out. time you've said this yet, or no? Uh, I, you know what, I think it might have been joked about. You know, I haven't, I haven't said exactly that that's going to be the title before, but yeah, I can say with certainty that it's definitely going to be called Thought, Flesh, and Bone. Well, there it uh, is. And uh, we're kind of, uh, actually at the moment, we're, we're working on, uh, you know, album artwork and things like that, so it's just... You know, it's it's getting really close to its its uh, its release date, and I think that that's going to be either at the very tail end of September or the very early October. So during that Wellesley Arms or his Sun run, uh, gotcha. the record should be available then. Well, hopefully you have it out before the twenty seventh, so I can actually pick it up at the show. So that would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be ideal for me to at least get it there as well. So, so what kind of what are we expecting on it? Obviously, we're probably going to have these three songs, like a drug. Or... Yeah, it's going to be like a drug, kind of start and uh, insomnia, and then uh, I think I think we cap the track listing off at uh, it's either twelve or eleven, but I'm not sure. There's okay. one song, like two songs that we're debating uh, putting them on the record or not. Or, you know, because we wrote quite a few and, you know, narrowing it down to your your star pupils can be quite difficult. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we think we're, 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 we're just really feeling strong about, you know, this release. And um, we spent quite a bit of time, yeah, right after we uh, got done. I mean, we never stopped writing them. And, and, That's what it uh, seems like with really you guys, like, yeah. Yeah, we don't really have, like, a, a set time, like, oh, we're going to, you know, because we have our own production uh space that it just kind of keeps us uh gives us the flexibility to stay busy all year long uh, so some of these songs a few of them date back you know maybe about a i want to say a year and then you know that some of the newer ones maybe only like two or three months but okay. uh what's been great is we've been able to keep the focus and they all sound like a record and that was really important to us you know because uh, yeah. it's easier to just throw a bunch of songs on a, on a you know on a disc and go oh, yeah, ahead it's our record but uh, we we were you know Mike and I we grew up on album rock so consistency and uh, cohesiveness is very very important uh, when constructing kind of track listing and things like that. Very cool. So that's that's good that you're still sticking with the whole uh, we must make an album genre rather than just single 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 maybe put on a couple <laughs> exactly. songs. I mean as much as I love that too, it could be really watered down. But for bands to put out you know just a hard ass album a good album from front to back. They're starting to come back again, finally, so that's good for the music industry, but it got watered down for a while, I would say. It did, yeah. I mean, you, start, you definitely start to see uh, kind of a bit of filler track on record. A lot of filler like tracks that. and a lot of laziness, it seems like, and now that, like you said, you guys are coming back, but actually, like, so far what I hear is going to be solid, solid all the way through. Perfect. So Perfect. that's what your uh, plan is. So I'm going to go with one last question here, and I ask this to basically everybody I ever ask. Give us your three-band dream lineup that you would want to play with any era. Oh, man, any era. Okay, so, uh, so 
we would be the third band, or are we the first? Employee? Whatever. You can put yourself wherever you want. You could be the headliners, but then you got three other bands behind you or in front of you, whatever you want to do. I don't know do. if I can headline on, on my heroes. I, I don't <laughs> think I can do it. <laughs> well, you have to, so uh, just do it that like way. I said, okay, so I, I, think, I think it would be great. Uh, you know, we'll open the show up, and then after that, uh, this might be such a strange... Sound. Oh, trust uh, me, I get a lot of really interesting lineups, man. So, you know, bring it. It would be us, and then uh, it would be Depeche Mode. And okay. And then Depeche Mode, you'd have the doors. I think that would be quite, there you a, go. quite an experience musically. Uh, I, mean, God, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm one of the biggest doors fans ever, so they're always on my list. And you have one more, so, you know, you can throw another one on there. Oh, yeah, that's right. There is a, okay, so the <laughs> You know who is one of my, who I just appreciate uh, their music so much is uh, uh, Third Eye Blind. I just think nice. that their songwriting, um, especially on those first two records, is just really uh, just well, super well crafted. So so maybe them throwing in the mix there too. But if you ask me a week, it might change. Well, that would be a very eclectic sound of uh, bands right there. So sounds like an early Lollapalooza lineup. <laughs> yeah, with the exception of the doors. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying if the Doors were to play Lollapalooza, they'd headline it regardless. So, yeah. It's the same they never did. Yeah. Unfortunately, same. they were long gone before that. So yeah. let's let's plug what you got coming up. What do you have coming up that we you want to throw out there? Obviously, you have the rest of the uh, tour with Dorothy. You have your fall tour with Glor- Glorious Sons, Welshly Arms, and the new album. So where can we find you? All over social media. <laughs> Yeah, you can uh, you can find us on, on uh, you know Instagram and Charming Liars, it's a, uh, a Charming Liars, all, all kind of the same. Or on Spotify, or, you know, if you can't get to a show and buy the physical copy, or, or get it on online, um, you can always you know check it out on, on Spotify or Apple Music, on those other uh, you know streaming platforms. Um, but the, the best way to see us, I think, is just. To come to a show, come to a show see the guys after the band after the set's over talk to them yeah, well, you know have fun with know, it exactly yeah we'll, we'll, we'll be people for the night um, and uh, you know I think the, the, the thing too is we're going to have vinyl so you know you can't download vinyl whoa whoa whoa, whoa. wait wait you got vinyl coming too we're doing vinyl yeah it was very very important uh, you know for our first record to be you know uh released on vinyl. I don't okay. know if it's going to come out exactly when the album comes out, but, it, you know, because it takes uh, quite a little a bit of time to get it all pressed. Oh, um, yeah, for but, sure. But it will be coming out for sure. Well, then that's going to be one of my uh, add twos on my list here because I got a shit ton of vinyl that I just love to collect now, so... Me too, man. That'll I got be... over 500 records myself. Okay, you got a lot more than I have. I have, like, 70, but they're, like, really tight ones, too, so... Oh, it's quality, getting there. Yeah. yeah, I have quality right now over quantity. That's by far. So, man, Killian, I want to really appreciate you joining me today. We're almost at 30 minutes. Who would have thought that that would have gone so quick? Yeah, so, you, you know, time flies and you have fun, right? Exactly. So I want to appreciate you joining me today. Can't wait to see you guys September 27th in Chicago. Man, you have a great afternoon, okay? You too, man. Thanks so much. Not a problem.